Hello folks, this is Ravahuja again, coming to you from the hallways of the IBM Toronto lab. Um, there's been a lot of interest in workload management, so today we're going to talk to Paul Bird, senior technical staff member and uh, one of our key architects when it comes to um, workload management, security. What else, Paul? Uh, just anything really to do with SQL, a lot of that general processing is what I'm involved in. Okay, great. Um, Paul, in Viper 2, I understand that there's uh, a lot of uh, new capabilities when it comes to workload management. Can you give us a sense of what they are? Sure. Uh, well, basically, we're introducing um, a lot of new features, but the, the, the two main goals we're trying to do. First thing is we're trying to lay some key core foundation for workload management both now and in the future, while at the same time providing some tangible, real benefits that you can see right away uh, as of Viper 2. And uh, the key direction or the key focus of what we're trying to do is we want to integrate these new capabilities right into the engine uh, this, and, and, and shift our focus from uh, away from managing the entry to the system to managing the actual execution environment within DB2. Okay, so what what has really led to the shift in this focus? Well, a couple of years ago, we, we sort of sat back and we looked at what requirements were coming into us, what patterns and uh, trends we saw in our customer environments, and then we talked to a number of our customers, and it became very clear to us that we needed to do some fundamental changes to our approach. Uh, we realized that, first of all, that our customers wanted to be able to create a stable, predictable environment in which their work executed within DB2. And uh, this was becoming more difficult for them. They were having, their databases were growing larger, there was more work coming in, different types of work, and even work with different business priority. And their job was to juggle and manage all that while still getting predictable response times and uh, throughput. So it became very clear to us at a certain point that we had to begin to manage the execution of this work, not just the entry into the DB2, but actually be able to provide the administrator the, the ability to monitor and control this work while it's executing. And uh, I guess the other thing was that we, we learned was that in order to provide the degree of control and monitoring that people were asking us for, we, we, we had to bring this capability right into the core engine and build it in the base engine and design it from the start to handle high throughput, high volume uh, workloads. Okay, sounds good. So you mentioned that uh, um, Workload management in Viper 2 is going to provide some real benefits right away. Can you give us an idea of what those benefits are? Well, uh, there's three I usually talk about. There's a number, but there's three I usually talk about. And the first one is, uh, for the first time ever, you're going to be able to explicitly allocate things like a CPU priority and prefetch I.O. priority be between different groups of work using a um, new concept that we're introducing in Viper 2 called the, the DB2 service class in which you can put groups of work. You can actually assign the CPU and prefetch priority to different service classes and differentiate between those groups of work. Uh, there's another aspect there that's actually very useful if you're on AIX, uh, workload ma uh, on AIX platform. Using the AIX workload manager, we are going to provide the ability to tightly integrate the DB2 service class with the AIX service class and this is going to let you uh, DB2 will automatically associate work in a DB2 service class with the appropriate AIX service class so now you can take advantage of AIX workload manager CPU management capabilities which is a lot more sophisticated than, than it is uh, normally available. Uh, that's one. The other one that I think of most of the time is uh, and it comes up a lot is we want we I think we've greatly enhanced your ability to catch to identify detect and prevent rogue queries or runaway queries queries that are behaving abnormally or using more resources than you expected uh, and the D, the new DB2 threshold feature that's in Viper 2 this lets you set up some thresholds based on certain attributes and criteria the example would be for example well estimated cost or how long the activity has been running and then you can say, well, when a certain threshold has been reached, take an action, and you can collect detailed information about the activity, which you can look at later to try and do some post-mortem activity to, to see if what caused this problem. But also you can say, stop it. And the best example, I think Tim used this in his talk with you, is that you can actually set up a, a predictive threshold that says any query that enters the system 
that's greater than 100,000 Tamarons, I'm very interested in that. I want you to collect information on it, but let it go. Let it continue to run. And then you could also have another threshold that says, any query that runs longer than 10 minutes, there's something fishy about that. I want to collect detailed information about it and stop it. So this type of control lets you automatically box in or control the behaviors of the work within different service classes and within the system as a whole. And that would be very useful. Instead of waiting an hour or two to find out there's a problematic system, uh, sorry, problematic query on your system, the system can help you detect it and shut it down much earlier. Um, and finally, I guess the last thing I talk about is uh, we've provided a whole new range and depth and breadth of capability in terms of monitoring. And uh, we've provided table functions so that you can actually dive into the in-memory uh, characteristics or information that's in DB2 and you can actually see what's going on. You can see what connections are in the system. You can see what work they're running. In fact, you can get details about the work. You can get what type of statement, even some of the statement text. Just dynamically as the system runs. You can also uh, capture much more detailed information about individual activities than you ever could before. Capture the statement text, which you could do before. The compilation environment and in input data values. And I guess the, finally, in terms of monitoring, the last thing we sort of added is a, a aggregate activity information. This, think of this as these are distribution statistics or histogram information about activities so that you can track um, response times in a service class and you can look at the, the distribution of response times and then you can see if there's some that are outliers or if it's trending to a higher response time than otherwise uh, you, you would expect. And those are sort of the three things that immediately are possible in Viper 2. Alright, that sounds great.